Hello guys and welcome to a new Warner video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 versus 10 on Twin Cities. And if there's one thing that I was incredibly excited about in the latest update, it was the introduction of 10v10 on the map Twin Cities. This map is already epic enough when you play it 4v4 with the huge clashes over these cities. But now with 20 people on the map, Things are only going to get more and more intense. So starting off here with a pretty risky strategy today. Going for the Akula start with the 35th Guards Air Assault Brigade. This thing has incredible Asia Gems. 70% accurate Vikia missiles. The beautiful thing about it is it can fire those Asia Gems on the move. Yes, with limited accuracy. Uh, but if you stop whilst the HGM is still in flight, I'm pretty sure it adjusts to the increased accuracy. So that's really, really nice. It allows you to sort of fire one as you're on the move, then stop to get the accuracy. Really, really nice indeed. So, Iglers moving up at the start. The intention of all of these Iglers is to A, shoot down enemy transport helicopters that might potentially come in, but B, also deal with enemy aircraft that might try and dive for my Akula. I'm keeping the Akula safe for the time being because I did notice that the entire start of our opponent here, Fasten, is SAS and every single one of these SAS squads has a stinger. But not only that, they are elite squads. So they are very accurate with those stingers. And that is something I'm going to want to avoid, of course, with a helicopter. So it's really up to the Spetsnaz to try and do as much damage against these as possible as Vuro Boy uh, Vorobai here comes in with the KDA Schutzen and starts to put pressure onto those. Artillery coming in for my Spatsnaz already in this town and you can see things are just lighting up here as the shots come in from either side. We've got rocket artillery from one side, artillery shells coming in from the other. Actually, rockets from both sides now smashing the town to pieces as the KDA Schutzen are getting the better slowly but surely of the SAS. My Spetsnaz here sitting in real flanking positions, not getting affected by this artillery at all. Is allowing me to get a lot of damage on target. We're going to be able to take out one SAS there. Going to be trying to hunt down the next one. Because these have low cohesion and my Spetsnaz are perfectly okay, that's going to be multiple dead SAS squads. And I want to kill as many of these as possible so that I can get my Akula into play. As soon as those SAS are taken care of, the Akula can move up, use cheeky line of sights to use its rockets, and get the HGM on target of any vehicles, although we haven't really seen many yet. On the far flanks, you can see I have brought in the Desan Conkers. Those are obviously there to deal with enemy vehicles as well. But catching out another of these Spetsnaz squads, he's going to be left face down on the floor. Spetsnaz really, really doing very, very well here. It bleeds my heart as a Brit to watch the SAS go down like this. But in this game, I'm rooting for the Spetsnaz. Looks A1 out in the open here on the water. You can see it does have the amphibious trait, so able to swim around. Has to pull off its smoke so that the mi 8 doesn't rocket it to death out in the open there. That would be a pretty horrible way to go. Okay, more Spetsnaz on the way to try and back me up and really try and get on top of these SES as much as possible before they manage to get away. So catching out another one here. They're trying to run. I'm going to get my AKSU 74s on target for another SAS kill. Now the Akula has moved up as you can see and I'm hoping that Vodabai kind of follows me here because I pretty much cleaned out the entire right side so I want him to try and take this as soon as possible. Tornado GR1 coming in for the bombing strike there managed to stop my Spetsnaz from getting in the building in time to avoid that huge bombing strike. Now going to be up against High Machutan and two snipers though. And that is not good news for me. My Spetsnaz is going to try and move out of line of sight of the snipers so they don't take as much damage. I've got the UAZs moving up to get more supply for these Iglers. I, I'm pretty sure I was convinced that these had used up some Iglers, but it was actually the AKS-74 that had used up its ammo in this case. So I'm going to make sure to turn that off 
and make sure those Igla squads don't reveal themselves by using those AK-74s in future. So Spesnaz, meanwhile, going to just keep trying to fall back. We are slowly chunking through that high much Schutzen, but we need to be super careful as more artillery is going to be hitting my Spetsnaz there. The Akula trying to shift into position to get rockets on target. Now, more rocket artillery coming in. Got to be really, really careful. My one Spetsnaz trying to get back to safety. Rockets are getting on target, though. Sniper is going to go down. One Spetsnaz has fallen. The second one trying to run through the city here. There he goes. Massive artillery strike coming in. Check out the destruction, and this is the beauty of a 10v10. It may not be crazy gameplay wise, but it absolutely looks awesome. We have got off to a very good start, to be honest. Double Spets now the reinforcements waiting to move up. Of course, we do have friendly artillery also coming in that we kind of have to wait for. This man is managing to get out of here. Apparently moving through this building. <laughs> there he is, through the fire and the flames. <laughs> Trying to get back to safety. Tavoro did manage to move up here. Actually got a Fauschemjäger Metis into this building, which is massive. Su-22 coming in with a bombing strike there as well from... Uh, solo way. Now that did a nice chunk of damage as well. But what we're going to want to do is try and get the Conkers to move up into one of these high rises further up eventually so that we can just shoot stuff that comes up the road. Metis on the right side looking for the Eltis. Doesn't manage to find it. This Conkers trying to move forwards. It looks like Solo Way's command did get spotted here so that's going to have to try and get away from that artillery because if we lose that right now uh, then we'd be reliant on Marshal Josephs who does have a backup which is nice actually so it wouldn't be so bad if that died obviously we don't want to lose a leader if we don't have to Aria GR3 coming in for the run onto the Akula and that's what I was worried about the Akula is worth more than that Harrier so him getting that kill is uh, all he really needs to do in order to make that worth it. Spets Naz in a, actually a really good position now. Close enough to use their RPO. Put good pressure onto all of these infantry. We've also managed to find line of sight onto their leader. So we want to try and push them out of this sector as soon as possible. Because on the right hand side you can see things are not looking good for our team. We have lost Charlie already. Bravo is completely under the control of the NATO side. We have taken control of India and obviously pushing through the city. But things are definitely still ramping up. The mechanized rifles get smacked by an artillery shell there. And they're going to go down. Full control of the city is ours as we clean up the remaining pioneers. And it's up to them to push back into this, which will be pretty futile in this position. I'm going to back up my position here with a ton more of these Iglers. Iglers work really well in these high rises because they shoot from the top, which means they get really good line of sight against enemy helicopters and aircraft. They get that extra little bit of range towards aircraft, which would usually fly higher as well. So, yeah, just spamming Iglers here, a good way to try and shoot down some of the aircraft that might try and hit our units in the building. Spetsnaz now in trouble as multiple M113s are going to engage them but I do have an MI24V here. They're going to be peeking around the corner of this building. Trying to get rockets on target to press some of this DPS that's coming in towards Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz now going for a runner. Probably should have made them retreat a little bit sooner. Carrier GR3 coming in again for a dive onto the MI24, but this time not going to pay off. I do manage to shoot it down. We have had a supply helicopter come in and land on the park so that we can get the MI24V fixed up. Spetsnaz in between these buildings, still doing a little bit of a runner here. He's 
trying to get away. As the M113 is hunting him down. Does manage to kill him off. Unfortunately, I think one of those rockets landed pretty much on top of him. Got a, another leader in this sector now. Just to double down on the security of the CVs. Doesn't really need to be that far up. I think I just misclicked, to be honest. So you can see I'm going to manually move that back and around this building so that it can hide the Libertino firing away. Very, very awesome to watch. Cluster coming in. Jaguar cluster, but all of the Eaglers and such going to be hitting the mark. Big damage. MI24 VP moving forwards. Maybe a little bit too much in this case. Dropping some flares as the blowpipes shoot at it. it. Does have rockets to fire at the blowpipes. I might not have to be too worried about that. Unless the blowpipes hit the mark. In which case, it's going to go down. Besser and Conkers now going to be shifting up. Eaglers getting the shots in there. Now all of my Iglas that I purchased earlier finally going to be arriving. Because Twin Cities is a very deep map, you can see that the reinforcements do take a long time to get to the front, particularly when you have pushed past the halfway mark on this map. We're trying to reinforce stuff into these buildings right at the front here, and so yeah, they have to go a very, very long way to get there. All right, another MI-24V coming in to back up the first. It was bought as a replacement. Mainly because I thought this one was going to go down. We're going to be able to get some rockets on target here. We're going to pull it alongside this building so that we're out of line of sight of those man pads. So I'm micring these MO24Vs around just to make sure they don't get hit by these AA pieces. You can see that the missiles do manage to sometimes slip through still. Thankfully, our opponent, I think, was relying on blowpipes. I'm going to manually lower the altitude of this one so they can potentially get shots through onto the higher Marschutzen if they get in the building there. But another bombing strike coming in, going to completely <laughs> decimate these tower blocks. Now artillery looking for my leader behind this building. My 24B did also get hit. Unfortunate. This is currently stunned. I'm gonna obviously move it now. So in order to use this MI-26 effectively, I am bringing in these little UAZ trucks and they are going to be able to move up, be inexpensive. If they get hit by this artillery, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be able to get the Iglers and more ammunition and fix up the squads if they're low health. Yeah, artillery there, you can see hit both of the UAZs, the second bunch of artillery coming in from the left hand side. Absolutely destroying these skyscrapers. But we're still in the town. And uh, none of this artillery is that effective, just because a lot of it explodes at the bottom. And so it doesn't do much damage to the infantry inside. It's it's a limitation of the engine, I believe. Uh, the, because technically when you're in one of these buildings, you're at the top. Because the artillery explodes near the bottom, it doesn't actually do that much damage. I think they're trying to work a way, work out a way to program that in. So, back to the state of the map after what was an explosive start to this game. We can see that they have managed to consolidate full control on the right, and we have pretty much full control on the left. Just got to be careful of the guard here who's putting pressure onto our teammate. Currently, we're ahead 175 points to 98. A long way to go in this one as we now both teams need to find a way to kind of break the stalemate that has started. My Conkers is going to be doing its best to 
keep back any transports and armor that puts pressure onto the town. Meanwhile, I'm going to bring in some conkers to help control the center. And I've also got the MI-24s you can see moving over the support here as well. I'm going to be accompanying that with an MI-8 MTA, C-64B coming in to provide like a sort of frontline tank. Bonkers, firing a well. Looking for the Bradley kill. The Bradley's going to smoke itself off. No kill for now. Looks A1s have managed to get pretty deep up this road, but they don't have any AA. Eagle comes in, actually misses its infrared. My MiG looking for the long range snipe. Gonna be a tough one. But the second missile hitting the mark and the Eagle going down to the MiG 29. Huge kill, actually, for the MiG 29. Very, very nice indeed. That particular MiG has an awesome paint job. And one thing I would never recommend is diving helicopters with eagles. Usually you want to dive helicopters with aircraft that are cheaper than the helicopter you're trying to shoot. And in particular, do it with aircraft that have 30 mils on twin 30 mils. So that they can get enough damage with their main gun, even if they don't hit the missile. In this case, the Eagle it's too fast for its own good, and its gun's not effective enough in that in the time that it has on target. So it really doesn't do much damage, and even if it did hit a missile there, it wouldn't have killed my helicopter. So as a recommendation, never really dive with an Eagle unless... I mean, there are some exceptions, of course, you know, if it's really, really low on health, for example, and it's like an Akula, then you might want to dive for it, but... Otherwise, generally, you, you don't want to. Those eagles are really, really important for dealing with enemy aircraft as opposed to helicopters. Right, we've got uh, two MA-24Bs kind of covering the T-55 that's managed to contest this centre sector. This is a plus two sector, so you can see we are finding the plus two there from neutralising that whilst holding the other sectors here. On the left, you saw our, our teammates ping, saying to fortress this left side. Well, we are certainly turning the city into a fortress here. My Conkers, however, has run out of supply. Buratino in a bad spot right now as the artillery comes in. See the rockets there hitting the water. Actually looks really, really cool. But the M1A1 is actually the thing in the end that manages to get the shot on target. That's the trouble with those Buratinos because they do have a limited range. They can easily end up in line of sight of heavy tanks. So make sure to keep those safe and always move them back after they've fired. It's just a matter of getting more supplies in my Conquest now. Uh, but otherwise, Spetsnaz is going to stay hidden, Higgler's staying hidden. I'm very much focused on what I'm trying to do with the MI-24Vs on the left-hand side here. Uh, coming in to resupply those and fix them up with another MI-26. So I'm setting up like another MI-26 supply area here that my team can use if they want to. One thing that I will say, uh, in 10v10s, it's something that comes up occasionally. People don't like sharing fobs. And sometimes I can understand it. Like if, if it's like a, someone's going really, really heavy on the artillery, uh, they're going to want to make sure that they have enough supply to continue to do that throughout the game. But what I will say is that fobs don't use up their supply very quickly at all. Uh, there's 15,000 supply in there. So it's going to take you a while to get through that. And in most cases, it's better to let your team use it because it's going to help you win the game quicker. But then you won't need as much supply anyway. Anyway, MI-24s here engaging with their 80 mil rockets. Rockets are incredibly good for dealing with infantry in buildings like this because they hit the unit on the top of the building as opposed to the base of the building. So they actually end up doing a good amount of damage. Meanwhile, the MI-24 did manage to get a Cocon onto the Fox, so we took that out as well and were able to pretty much land immediately 
Again, Gepards trying to get some shots on target there. Comes under fire from four rated gems and survives. A little bit unfortunate. Rocket artillery not going to hit the mark for the time being. Left side, still well under our control. My team's going to continue to contest this. I'm not going to be moving many more units there. As I mentioned before, I was focusing quite heavily on the MI-24Vs because the idea that I had is the way we can contest Charlie is by having solid control in this city. If we can get up to here, for example, and control these high-rises, high which prevents the reinforcements coming in, we can get a command onto this side of the sector uh, without being under threat. And that's going to allow us to contest this for the rest of the game, find that plus two that might win us the game. MI-24 getting more 80 millimeter rockets on target. Meanwhile on the left, Conkers did find an M1A1 kill. So that was really good. Killing the M113 there as well. In the middle, being told to attack with a T-64. That would be an absolutely terrible idea right now. <laughs> Completely unsupported uh, T-64. <laughs> Moving up the center would not be a good idea. So I'm just kind of waiting for the right opportunity to move that up. MI-24s are struggling to land here and potentially in line of sight of the AMX-30 if they do. So just making sure to move back the supply hub and be a little bit safer. My Iglers able to get shots onto the Lynx Edge one, so that's nice. Meanwhile, Conker's still firing away. I do have supply, finally to use so that's uh, going well over there meanwhile mi8 did fly to the back side of the sector i suicided my mi8 forwards to try and find information as to where the enemy command was here because you can see that uh, our teammate has unfortunately crumbled up against guard in india and that's going to neutralize the plus two that we're getting from contesting charlie so Spetsnaz going to get bombed out. Mirage 5 was sacrificed for that. So I'm not too concerned. MI-24 here. This one has 122mm rockets. You can see it does a ton of damage to infantry. Main issue, of course, is that it is limited in the amount that it does have. And no real need to get more stuff into this sector for the time being. See the Apache came over a couple of these OH-58s. Meanwhile, SU-25 AT looking for guards tanks in India. And the opposing command has moved out temporarily. Under a little bit of threat from the AA that's sneaking forwards in these buildings. You can see my MI-24B here taking a decent amount of damage, but Nighthawk Gonna end up getting shot down. The Cubs doing their job. Igler's also. This Igler almost going down. But what I'm gonna want to do here is just make sure these are fixed up, move them away as soon as possible. So if artillery does come in onto the MI-24, we are able to get it out of there in good time. Let's just take a moment to zoom in and enjoy the view this mi-24 trying to engage a couple of these leopard 1a5s in the frontal armor you can see that we do do a significant amount of damage in the side it would be a one shot in this case though the oh-58s have managed to sneak up these do fire very very quickly and they do have 60 percent accuracy so able to take down my mi-24 my fault really for not respecting that as I could see them for a while. SU-25, Frogfoot coming in for the Ace Gems onto the M1 IP. It's enough push strife, 80 onto the second. That's two M1 IPs going down. I'm going to help our teammate here get into position. The Spetsnaz now going to be joining the crew on the left-hand side. 
I'm going to need infantry to contest their infantry. I'm also going to want to try and take out as much of their AA as possible. The 20 mils, the man pad squads, so that the MI-24V can get its rockets and HGMs on target without having to be under so much threat. Honkers trying to get shots onto the Leopard 2A3, but unfortunately not finding the kill. Strata 10M trying to engage the Apache. The Apache with its HGM does outrange the Strata, so got to be really, really careful when making those engagements. And in this case, it uh, looks like our opponent there going to be able to get away with it. Conkers, meanwhile, does get killed off by the Leopard 1A5s. Um, I have brought up another Spetsnaz Comrati. So teammates are providing smoke here. I'm going to try and get the Spetsnaz into the sector. He's got to be really careful with the PT. Because that will get taken out. And the Leopard 1A5 does the job there. And my MI-24 is going to be taking a shot. HGM slowly creeping in. It's going to miss. So the way that we can do this is yeah, pretty much just what we are attempting to do right now. Smoke off the edge of the sector, find a lead in points, and then sort of run out the game as best we can. Of course, we do want to try and fully control this if possible, and it will force them to push in aggressively on this position if we do take it. There is certainly a lot of action still to come. Nona is going to be invested in just in case I need to provide my own smoke. MIA chilling with the MI24V for the time being. You see I'm finally moving up the T64B as Valdis does the same with the T72s. I'm going to try and get them into position. Wild Weasel coming in with the Seed Missile. Does end up getting shot down by a combination of my Iglas and all of these Kubs. Quite simply did not have enough Seed Missiles to get the job done. Now a T64BV going to be joining us towards the town so that, or the city sorry I can actually call these cities it's funny in instead of division two because there wasn't many cities or any cities I always ended up accidentally calling them cities and then now I like make sure to call things towns rather than cities but in this game I can actually call them cities which is great <laughs> finally <laughs> Right, Spetsnaz is moving in here as the smoke comes in as well. You can see that my Nonna is creating a smoke wall here. B64B trying to get an HGM on target. That's basically what these are trying to do right now. I've got my MI24V that could be trying to put HGMs on from the left hand side as well. But not getting too lucky with these, unfortunately. More supply going to be coming in on the left-hand side. I was keeping an eye on this just in case. You can see the specimens have got low. Artillery over time will whittle down the units that aren't in high-rises, so uh, I am careful of that. A couple of pioneers trying to get on top of the specimens in the smoke here. Uh, the helicopter ready and waiting to absolutely obliterate those with rockets. Managed to take out one. If he manages to get next to my Spesnaz though, it's not going to matter too much. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, move forward just a little bit there towards the Pioneer. It's going to give me the shock trait. And then if they find me, I can actually kill them off. But it looks like he's just going to run straight past. So I'm going to keep that hidden so it doesn't get targeted by enemy artillery. Big artillery coming in right now. You can see the counter battery cluster artillery onto the Ekatsayas of Onini and then we have the Kubs getting hit as well along the way but Spetsnaz did manage to take out one of the 20 mil AA in these buildings before going down themselves Curtain now coming in with a bunch of AML 90 elixirs pushing hard onto these troops. These are multiple conquers though and a T-72. That T-72 can't afford to miss its mark though. And this is pretty sketchy as rocket artillery hits the conquers in the first shot. That is absolutely brutal. But the rocket artillery is also hitting the lynxes so it is going to stun one of them. This T-72 is not having a fun time. 
Meanwhile, on my side of things, T64 BB has got into position, trying to get the Mi 24V as safe, as close as safely possible. But the Fliegerfast going down there, these AMLs caught in the crossfire as the rocket artillery hits them as well. It's up to these two T-72s further back to hold the road. It's best now still running around in this sector. And now this T-64 BV able to provide some fire support onto these units. Now T-64s or, or any tank really is actually really good fire support against units in a town. But I wouldn't ever say put the unit in the town itself of course because that's going to get it killed by side shots or like just like AT overwhelming it for example but shooting in from the side like this you can see it does chunk the legionnaires over time that was going to be a diving fighting falcon for the mi-24v but i managed to get the land off in time to dodge that they're not going to target on the ground if it manages to land in time so that's good meanwhile here though the puma pirates they are, they are definitely threatening for the T-55. The T-55, if hit from multiple angles, will go down. The 20 mils did have line of sight. The Mi-24B engaging the rifles, engaging the Mi-1 IP in the town. Still doing plenty of damage. You see that the Spetsnaz that they moved in here previously did force back the AA that was supporting it. And therefore, they're able to. I'm able to get the rockets down range, which is really, really good. T64, meanwhile, is still babysitting the leader that I have running around in the corner here, which is still ticking us up a plus two. We're up to 707 points in this game so far as the T64s continue to provide their fire support onto the city. Look at that. Very, very cool. Auto loaders firing away. Mi 24V in the city. Going to be able to get the Cocon on target. Looking for the CEV kill. Manages to hit it in the front armor. Trying to finish it off with HE. But I am going to run out of 80mm rockets just before I can. So another HGM required. Boom goes the CEV. Spetsnaz OP now trying to join the Spetsnaz in dealing with the remainder of the engineers and grenadiers. The one on the right, T-64B, actually doing a ton of damage to this infantry. Things going very, very well. On the left, Fessen, the guy who we were playing against, did surrender and leave the game. So you can see the dog like a, is trying to move forwards. Spetsnaz, they still got a little ways to go. M1 IP is still a problem, of course. Yes, I have an H gem here, but in the front armor, the M1 IP is going to tank the Cocon relatively well. It's going to take much more than one Cocon to get the job done, and those Cocons, they've actually got a hit first, so there's also that. Check out this rocket artillery coming in here. BMP waiting as all this rocket artillery comes overhead. Awesome, awesome scenes. And this is exactly why I wanted to share this with you guys today. Because whilst there are slow moments, there are also absolutely epic moments. And seeing the helicopter here, for example, like take out the M1 IP in the middle of the city is really, really awesome to watch. The Helicopters have been doing wonders for me in this game so far. B64 BVK on the way. So this BVK is here to replace the Spetsnaz really in the edge of this sector potentially because it's going to be a lot more resilient to artillery fire that would come into the smoke. So my idea is to instead of have the Spetsnaz running around like a headless chicken, we have the uh, T64 BVK move in there and pretty much just secure it as best as possible. 
Now, eventually, my MI-26 did get killed back here. I think it got hit by artillery or something in the end. But our teammate has brought in his own MI-26, so that's providing supply on that side. And I've got this MI-26, which I believe is a replacement to the previous one, coming in to fix up the or resupply the MI-24 V. I think I sold the one that was at this city because it had reloaded the MI-24 V so many times with rockets. So yeah, I ended up selling it. Anyway, that's going to land there. It looks really big when you zoomed out because I have unit scaling on. When you zoom in, it's not actually that big. But it's still going to take up an entire field here as it lands and resupplies the MI-24 V. Artillery strikes still coming in. As you can see, the artillery did manage to hit my Spetsnaz in the backside of the sector, and our opponents have managed to find a plus four because they've got a command into the back corner of India here, and we have not got our leader in that sector just yet. So once again, shots from a distance from the T-64s proving vital in these town engagements. My Spetsnaz here getting pretty low. Obviously don't want them to be taken out. Celtics coming up, looking for the Mistral kill onto the MI-24B. Gotta be really, really careful here. Mistral's very unlikely to miss though. Another aircraft with 60% accuracy firing those very, very quickly. MI-24B wasted as I once again disrespect the enemy helicopter AA. Spesnaz looking to leave before the Raden can find the kill and they just about managed to get out the building in time. Now going to be running back to the MI-26 to get fixed up. I'm getting relatively low on, on helicopters now. I have lost quite a few. We lost obviously our Akula. We lost a few MI-24s. And whilst this division does have a lot of helicopters, it is not something that I'm able to rely on for the entire game. So you'll see me start to bring in some other units now. I've got a BMD-2, for example, with the Desan Niki here. And we've got a new leader on the way. As I believe at some point my T-64 BBK, yeah, actually, yeah, it gets hit pretty hard over here. I moved it over to the left because we weren't contesting this before. The thing's still pretty crazy, like craters everywhere on this side. As Valdis does try to continue and make his assaults on the sector. It's pretty important that he does. You've got to keep up the pressure here because you don't want the players that are defending this to move elsewhere. F-111 is going to get shot down. TO-55 takes out the Raden. 2A3, 1A5's still a problem. The T-64 BB needs to hit those HGMs. Currently been relatively unreliable in this game. Some Descent Sapari RPO coming up to help defend the left side just in case infantry starts forcing its way in here. Because this is AI now, uh, well not all of this but just the Fessen player, it's going to push very aggressively into the town and that can be a problem sometimes. Leopard 105 does eventually die to the T-64 BV here. And my Jeep, meanwhile, now moving up to try and move in here. Of course, I don't want to go straight into that artillery. So having to be quite patient. Nonna, firing away with its smoke. Finding that sweet mortar fire. Spet Snaz now looking for the Fliegerfast kill. I do still have, I believe, another a cooler ready to go. So if I can remove enough AA, it could be worth investing in that in order to find the kills onto units like the Leopard 2A3 and the Gephardt. But T-80B's here managing to find the HGM there onto the Gephardt, so that's really, really nice. Laker Faust are going to be taken out. Engineers, meanwhile, taking a little bit of damage from the Spetsnaz. My BMD-2 did die very, very quickly, unfortunately. Keeping that back and providing the 30mm autocannon onto these buildings would have been really, really good, but not today. So yeah, leaders moved in here. Going to be cancelling out the plus two that occurred because of this. You can see the enemy supply, or enemy, sorry, leader, gets killed off. And Solo 8 
backing up our teammate to get the job done there. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Age of Gem and the T64B finding the kill onto the Leopard 2A3 that was retreating on low health. Spetsnaz that have been in previous engagements now resupplied by the MI26 going to be moving back into contact. Challenger forcing its way down the road here. It'd be really, really difficult for a tank in this scenario because you'd really struggle to raise your gun enough in order to do damage. MI24D of Valdis under threat from the Fighting Falcon. Going down very low. Kubs not quite able to hit the mark just yet. Do manage to punish eventually. That's good. Anytime an aircraft dives like that for a helicopter, you really do want to punish it. And in this case, the helicopter actually surviving. So Valdis is going to be able to bring that back and potentially get it fixed up, assuming that an AT, well, sorry, an AA doesn't finish it off, especially considering it is now on a attack move forwards. BMD2 on the left, moving around. Actually, that might have been the BMD2 that came in with one of these uh, Desaniki BMD there. That's actually moving around the left-hand side. And meanwhile, Mortifier is coming in onto the back side of the sector, and that has managed to hit this leader a couple times. Dealing the one damage there. B64BV is going to bump into an ALF color though. On the edge there. Allows the MI24 to rocket it to death. Keeps the T64BV safe from lack of information. Check out this left side. As now King Good is coming in and reinforcing the push. Really important that these HGMs hit the mark and so far, so good for our team. Meanwhile, still contesting this while controlling the left side of the map. So, plus two for our team. Still ticking up those points, but it's still 300 between us. Really, really, really close game. Left side, Igglers have been free killing basically these hell arms that the AI has been throwing at us. You might have seen that pop up occasionally. And meanwhile, BMD2 getting some shots onto the Alpha Color. Not able to finish it off, though. Takes a lot of damage in the process. <laughs> That's still moving around there. I need to be really, really careful. The consistent uh, uh, mortar fire onto the point. Bringing up another T64 PVK. This one's been fixed up on the backside of India. This one now going to be trying to push in uh, to here with the jeep because obviously the jeeps are uh, struggling a little bit. Vorpos though have been moved in and if he can get the smoke to this tree line he might be able to just hide them there. The rocket artillery pretty sketchy. Gonna want to try and get away from that if possible. Things were starting to get pretty tense now as this rocket artillery and the well, standard howitzer artillery that they have can continue to put pressure onto our leaders here. Like if we're smoking it off, it's quite obvious the rough area where it is. So these rocket strikes can be quite effective and you can see that the command vehicle that I had did die. But the Volpos able to get out of the way of any other rockets. So staying alive for the time being. Meanwhile... My T-64 still providing good fire support against these buildings. Berlin Night Rifles trying to hold back the spare snaz pushing forwards, but I'm slowly but surely working my way through here. And with this city control, it is allowing us to constantly contest the left side of the sector. And yeah, it's out in the open, but it's okay. T-64 BBK. Moving into position here. Actually got to be super careful as the Ace Gem flies in and finds a hit on target. Not good, obviously, for the health of that unit. Now Ace Gem fired. Jaguar 2s are the culprit. That T-64 needed to hit the mark. And I should have smoked way sooner. 
probably watching some other engagement here. Thank you, uh, going to be able to find the kill. I uh, was probably most likely microing the Spetsnaz on this side, which <laughs> in this case a much lower priority than the, the leader on the right. So my bad. But we still got a leader in there, which is what matters. So the plus two still ticking along. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, it has been back and forth across the open as their team continues to try and push deeper towards Alpha. Here comes the Akuda AT. The second one's on the field. Riding in as all of the artillery lying about. Look at that. Awesome view. Rocket artillery in the distance. Smoke pluming out of the city. This thing will have some work to do if it wants to defend the Volpos, which are <laughs> somehow still alive here. Look at them. Absolute chads. He's pinging for the help there. <laughs> because the Panzergren and the M13 have managed to get on top of him. It's up to the Akula really to stop this. Can I kill the M13 in time? Vicar firing away. Donald backing off. So it looks like the Vopos will survive, which is good. Going to take away our plus two with 13 minutes left on the clock. So we can play for time now. Buratino taking a shot. Doesn't seem to have hit too much. Oh, look at that. <laughs> All the Iglers I purchased on that left hand side really getting a ton of those Lynx kills. T64B is actually getting into really good positions up these roads as well. It's best as meanwhile running back to the MI26. We get fixed up. I've got another Spetsnaz here. Cycling out these Spetsnaz in this city engagement has saved me so many points. Nona providing smoke is coming under counter battery fire now. Couple BMD2s though on the way to support in the city. That's going to be really, really important. That's, that's our Niki Metis also now going to run all the way back to the MI26. And you might think that this is, you know, kind of silly, you know, running them all in this way. But honestly, when you're focusing on other things, this is actually a good use of your time. Just making sure that they run back like that. Especially if you don't have a transport that can necessarily carry them. Um, so... The BMD2 might be able to like pick up the Desaniki medicine, for example, and run them back, but it's not really worth it. Keeping the BMD here would be nice if it was fully healed. In this case, actually picking that up and moving it back would have been a good idea. Now I look at it. Yeah, Panzergren's going to get taken out by the KA-50 Akula. The Akula is actually doing a really good job, not necessarily with its AT weapon, but with those rockets for sure. That's Aniki here. Managing to get into that tree line is really nice. F4F coming in with the bombing strike. Doesn't manage to kill the Berk. Able to dodge a lot of these missiles so far. Not that last one from the Kub. The Zakataya. Lucky to be alive as they have been hit by multiple rockets of counter battery. My Nona here also getting hit very very hard. Finally goes down. Not too concerned about that. Akula firing away. Looking for the Jaguar kill. One thing I did notice is there isn't too much in the way of anti-air. Like you see there he's relying quite heavily on the OH-58. There's no real direct fire infrared that's Stopping my Akula from getting shots off with its AT. No, Spetsnaz here. Gonna have to move them back even further because the MI26 was also moved back. I think I reacted to the artillery when I saw it coming in. I mean, on the right hand side, things 
really heating up again. Marder 183 is making a push with the ERC 90s backing them up. And the Leopard 2A3 leader looking to push its way into our sector. Things are going to continue to get more and more desperate in this game as we move towards the end. Now only 10 minutes left. A 1,260 plus points against their 660. And we're still counting as the Volpols move back into the sector. There's no reason for me to have both in here at the same time. But I was hoping maybe I could sneak them into this tree line and uh, keep it hidden there for the foreseeable future while they continue to try and hit the leaders that are in the backside of this sector. But yeah, all of our players here having multiple leaders is really, really helpful for us to continue to contest this. Meanwhile, it's just a matter of killing off the infantry in the open and the BTR-60 there providing great fire support. The T-55s, of course, smashing the infantry pretty well as well. This city has been completely cleared. The Desarniki got the job done. T-64 is able to get shots onto the PVADs. Killing off the PVADs. Any AA really is really, really nice for us because it enables the Akula so much in this situation. And as we move to the extreme late game, there's going to be less and less of this AA available that was, they were probably relying on before to prevent the, the Akula from doing damage. Coops coming under for some artillery fire, putting my Akula under threat, actually. But uh, leaders are going to be going down. B-55 trying to hold the ground. I think my leader here, I pulled it back to the next stage safe. But we are going to take out the BO-105 with the Igla. That's a big kill. Now the T-64 engaging the AMX-30. Finding the first shot on target. Really, really good. Looking to find the second. Unfortunately missing. This does have a decent gun. Uh, 2,275 mid range on that thing. But the T-64, just a better all-round tank, gets the job done. Desarniki, meanwhile, here. Actually managing to hold the ground. Conker's going to find shot towards the Leopard 2A4. And yeah, they have managed to push us out temporarily. 2A4, 2A3. Actually really, really scary in this situation. Myakula using the city buildings here to sneak it close to the Leopards and try and find side shots into those. Because if my Vikia can find a side shot into the Leopard 2A3, it's going to find the kill. Just got to keep an eye on these OH-58s. If they start moving towards me, my Akula's got a bail. A Leopard 2A4. There we go. Perfect kill. Side shot straight into the 2A4. Looking for the same onto the 2A3, but he manages to find the smoke in time. A really, really good kill for the Akula. And if the Akula died now, it actually wouldn't matter too much. But the BMD2 still putting pressure onto Hotel Sector. There's a good chance that instead of fighting over Charlie, we could go for Hotel instead. My Desan Niki BMD2 now pushing forwards. As you can see, our teammates have noticed that as a point we could potentially take. But look at this. That's a lot of tanks coming under rocket cluster fire, moving up the highway. Meanwhile, Akula finding more HGMs onto the Leopard 2A3. Second one hits the mark after the first one already did. Third one goes straight in. 2A3 goes down. The Akula really, really coming up strong here in this engagement. Taking out those two heavy tanks before this swarm of T-80s and T-62s hits the field is really, really nice. But on the right-hand side, things are not looking good for the team as Crystal and Guard have managed to work their way through here with the backup of Curtain. That's some names, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, Valdis trying to head that off with an MI-24D. It's pretty important that we take this back because a plus four is a lot of points still. And they might be able to get ahead of us for the remaining five minutes. Artillery is slowly obliterating this convoy of tanks that was heading up the highway. They're having a real bad time here as another tank goes down. Mortifier is going to chip the health of these, potentially kill them off. 
past the main artillery, also smashing this highway. Now this map is very reminiscent of a map in the old Eugen games called Highway to Hell and uh, well <laughs> you can see why it was named as such as a push down it often ends in disaster and that's exactly what's happened here as multiple wrecks of these tanks are burning away Solo weight being incredibly ballsy with his MI9 <laughs> <laughs> Not sure quite what he expected to happen, but the Ace Gem there coming in from the Apache getting the job done. My Kula is going to shift up to see if it can snipe some more tanks. I'm also, of course, under threat from these tanks that are moving into the city here. UT64 BVs looking to head those off. I've also sent a T64B on the right hand side to try and help out our team. Kula does come under fire from the GR3 but we are able to shoot that down. I'm gonna have to go back fix that up at the MI-26. Enemy artillery looking for the kill onto my Jeep. I did hold that briefly. I'm just trying to dive in and out of there to slow down the points that they are getting. Meanwhile Spetsnaz OP trying to sneak up on these units so that we can kill them off. Things are extremely tense right now. We've got some strides coming up, but here goes the OPs. Spetsnaz OP needs to get its shots on target. And misses too. Absolute classic there. Finally manages to find a kill. Iglis moving to the right. Got to try and take care of these Apaches. Take out the OH-58. That's really big. That's going to re-enable the cooler. Apaches though, they need to go down. In this case, the Strella losing out to the Apache. Managed to find the kill. Big kill there from the Strella. Taking that down. That's going to potentially allow me to get the leader back into the sector here in a moment. MiG-21 coming in with the bombing strike onto the Jaguar 2 will cause the loss of cohesion. But lost line of sight onto the Strella, so not going to find the kill. Akula now coming in to uh, try and deal with that. T-64, meanwhile, on the right, going to be leading the charge against the Chieftain Mark 10 and multiple Mistral squads. So I'm hoping that we can potentially help get this T-80 BVK back into this sector so that we can neutralize the plus two that the opponents currently have. Our team is going deep for the Juliet sector. And it is currently working relatively well. Vorpus trying to get into this sector, but the OP didn't manage to kill the Leopard 1A1, so they are blocked. My T64 BVs have not managed to do the job, but here we have the T80 BVK. Capping back this sector, they still have their leader in here, so the T64B has a lot of work to do. My leader now moving back into the sector here. We're going to have the Akula ready to support there it is hovering waiting to catch something out fortunately losing sight there onto the jaguar the smoke stopping the second shot it's going to try and back up unfortunately losing line of sight but that one actually hitting without line of sight which was quite surprising i mean t64 Moving up now with the T-64 BV, just making big pushes into our opponents. Getting the leader in here, super important right now. Only a minute left on the clock. We don't want it to be a draw. Apache pushing up. is going to find the kill, so I'm not going to be able to contest this anymore. There's no more commands really here to contest this other than the Zapelli Komorotti of Grimgai. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, T-64B still alive and kicking. These Apaches on absolutely no health whatsoever. Su-25 able to shoot down one. Doesn't actually hit the second as it was not Q ordered. Now a plus four for the enemy with 30 seconds left on the clock. Vorpos trying to get into this sector but blocked by the rifles. T-64B is trying its best to take out the rifles as it gets an HGM 
onto the enemy unit there. The Akula moving up very aggressively. We know there's not much here to deal with this Akula. CEV gets taken out. Akula now trying to move into line of sight of the rifles. But that's going to be the end of the game. And it is going to be a victory just in time. An incredible 10v10. It really, really was. 10,173 kills. 4,145 losses. I got an absolute ton of kills in that game. Mainly due to the left side. Uh, the Conkers was doing a really good job throughout the game uh, over on that left hand side before it died. And also the Eaglers were shooting down a ton of the uh, Hell Arms that the AI was throwing at me. I mean, we can't discount the helicopters though, like the MI24 here getting uh, multiple. Uh, kills including an M1IP and an AMX-30B. The Akula of course killed a 2A4 and a 2A3. These T-64s did a great job supporting in the town. Like They were firing for ages at the tops of those buildings. Like This T-64B for example killing multiple of these units on the right hand side at the end. So really really awesome stuff. Fantastic that they've added the Twin Cities map to 10v10. I really, really enjoy it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this showcase of it. If you got to the end, pop ka 52 into a comment to let me know you made it because that was absolutely awesome. And I really appreciate those of you who watched the entire way through. But otherwise, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.